Greetings and welcome to another edition of Montpelier Connection. This is State Representative Mike Merwicki from the State House, and today's guest is Speaker Shap Smith. Hey, it's great to be here, Mike. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for taking time out of your busy schedule. <laughs> it's a busy time of year. Uh, we are um, past the the big bills on our yep. side. Yeah. Um, we've got some of the heavy lifting done. Now we're waiting for things to come back from the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, we just passed the budget yep. tax bill. Uh, something that I think a lot of people are really feeling good about was the net metering bill. Yep. Uh, Senate passed it, went to the governor. So this is, uh, I think, something in terms of economics that really is going to create jobs, help with our global climate, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our, our carbon footprint. Um, how, how do we get to, to, to get things like that through all the hoops and right. that we have to? So um, I was really uh, glad to be able to actually go to the signing of the net metering bill uh, this week. It was on uh, a farm in yeah. East Montpelier. And uh, what was interesting about it was this, we've always had this notion of the working landscape yeah. uh, in Vermont. And it just is sort of an addition to the working landscape. Yeah. Not only are you harvesting you know, hay and yeah and raising cows and, and, and milking cows, but you're harvesting the sun yeah. uh, and you're getting paid for it. Uh, so uh, it was a really big deal. And it's not easy to do this. So um, one of the challenges that we had originally with net metering when we first started it was how uh, you would feed the power back into the grid and how somebody who was generating it would be reimbursed for it. And uh, that has continually been a tension. Uh, but uh, and we had had a program that was so successful that we had bumped up against caps that had been put in yep. place. What happened was uh, the deputy commissioner of the uh, Department of Public Service yep. pulled a group of people together, utilities, uh, advocates for solar energy, people in the solar energy business, and said, hey, we got to figure out a way to allow more people to generate their own power. And uh, he did a great job. Everybody had to have skin in the game. It worked out pretty well. And there's actually a provision in there uh, that's really good for Wyndham County that allows some net metering uh, possibilities on former uh, landfill uh, areas. That's great. Um, sounds like a win-win. It was. Public-private partnership. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a great example of what can happen when people come together. Yep. Uh, they understand the goal that's in front of them. Um, and they understand that you know, net metering isn't just about harvesting the sun. It, it, it is really about what consumers want. Yep. Consumers want to be able to generate their own power, and they want to be doing it in a more diffuse way. I mean, they want to do it on their on their property. Yeah. So. Now, when early in the session we had Bill McKibben come, mm -hmm. and what last the, year, last year, right? Yeah. Yep. And um, one of the things he mentioned was that. We can't wait for Washington anymore, right. mm -hmm. and that we need to, right down to the local level, we need to do as much as we can. Uh, I think this is a good example yeah. of us doing our bit for decreasing our, our, our carbon footprint and, and moving ahead on what can be done. That is so true, um, and uh, you know it can't happen fast enough. But but think about it. Um, maybe eight years ago, we were basically close to zero generation of power from uh, these net metered projects. Now. Uh, it's pretty close to three to four percent mm -hmm. of uh, our generation in the state of Vermont. There are two things that are happening there. One, uh, it's great to have that local generation of power, but the other thing is it takes pressure off of the big power lines that are part of the grid. Um, and to the extent that we have to don't have to build those new power lines, that's good for the environment. But it's also uh, cheaper for us, so it's it's good. Yeah. Um, lately, in the, in the news, there's been a little bit of a um, questioning mm -hmm. about uh, our commitment to move forward with, with health insurance reform mm -hmm. to move forward with towards single payer. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor certainly stepped up and, and reiterated yeah. his intentions. Um, my sense is from talking to House members, we're still there. Mm -hmm. What's your, your thought? What well, your I, so I think that we are still on a path, and uh, there's no doubt that uh, there have been a couple bumps in the road. Um, but when you're doing a project uh, like this, there are going to be. Um, my 
view is uh, we ought to articulate what the path looks like uh, so people of the state of Vermont understand that. Um, and there's been a fair amount of attempt to uh, make that a little cloudier than it needs to be. But I think that what you will see is an articulation of benchmarks about when things need to happen for us to take the next step. So uh, the administration makes a recommendation to the Green Mountain Care Board about what kind of plans people should have under Green Mountain Care. Green Mountain Care Board looks at those, costs them out. We then have a sense of how much the whole thing's going to cost. And at that point in time, we have a timeline for what the financing is. So it, it, it's really a series of benchmarks that we know we need to meet along the way um, and pe give people confidence that we're doing the due diligence, but also give people the confidence that we, ha we know the path forward. Yeah. Um, I know the stories are out there that uh, we're not hearing yet, especially mm -hmm. from the navigators mm -hmm. who've been signing people up. Yeah. And the stories that I'm hearing are people who haven't had insurance yeah. or who've had insurance basically that was useless to them because mm -hmm. their deductibles were so high. And uh, I think once we start hearing uh, the stories from the navigators on the ground level, uh, right now the media has really been playing up the, the naysayers yep. and, and those who, who really don't want this to work. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, in a situation like this that's as comprehensive, this is the adoption of Obamacare and, and the Affordable Care Act, um, there are, there's going to be some winners and losers. Um, to, to a large degree, we've heard the stories of the losers. Um, and, you know, I, I could think back to uh, earlier this fall, I was in the uh, local convenience store. And I was talking to a friend of mine who I'd gone to high school with who works at the convenience store and who talked about how when she had first tried to figure out what was going on with regard to getting health care under the exchange, she was really frustrated. But she worked with the navigators, and the navigators were great. Yeah. And they helped her understand that she was actually going to save a couple hundred bucks a month and have better coverage. So those stories are out there. Yeah. Um, it's clear that the uh, bumpy rollout uh, really uh, put a bad spin to start with, and it's always hard to uh, recover from a from a bumpy start. Yeah, uh, looks like we're on track now mm -hmm. nationally yep. in, in the state. Um, the numbers look good, and I think and the enrollment numbers are going to be good. Yeah. And the other piece that I'm, I'm hearing is that <coughs> there were concerns about how the payments to providers were going to work, mm -hmm. and what I'm hearing is that it's working well. Yeah, I, I think that. Uh, well, there are a couple of things going on. One, uh, we've had pretty good partners with Blue Cross Blue Shield and MVP. Um, you know, we could not have made this work without uh, their willingness to be flexible um, and and work with us. And uh, that's a testament to the those organizations and the people who lead them, and their understanding that you know they have to be participants in transformational change. So uh, the. And their back-end systems have been pretty good on the payment end. So m overall, I think, actually, as we continue to move forward, people are going to be pretty happy. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just have a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. No, we, you've got a lot to do. We're yeah. still working on... Well, you've got to uh, drive back to uh, Putney at some point right. in time, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but luckily, the weather's, the weather's <laughs> this, changing. Yeah, right, yeah. The, the weather's finally catching up to the calendar. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Hopefully we won't have any, any more snowstorms to deal with. Uh, we're heading to the last month or so of the session. Um, where do you think we're going? And uh, you know, this is the time when we start having to negotiate with the other body, right. as we say, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and and then you know work with the administration. Uh, well, any concerns you have? Well, I mean, you know, you always have concerns at the end of the uh, of the day. But, you know, I think uh, I actually think there's going to be a good story to yeah. tell at the end of the year. And, and the story is going to be about making investments in Vermonters and making investments in Vermont. Yeah. And what do I mean when I say that? Well, you know, we're going to have the largest transportation bill we've ever had in the state of Vermont. That money is going to go straight into the ground to work on our roads and our bridges. But not only our roads and bridges, our rail system. Yeah. Uh, bike pad, public transit, all really um, important investments. Um, we're making investments in people. Uh, we know we have a real challenge around opiate uh, addiction. We're uh, putting money towards more treatment for that, and I think that's a really healthy sign. 
Um, we're trying to make sure that uh, we have good workforce and making investments in, in, in workforce development um, and making investments for the regional development corporations in, and in particular in Wyndham County yep. uh, directing some money that's come out of the settlement um, or, or part of the, the Vermont Yankee, the Vermont Yankee um, that there'll be money directed to uh, Wyndham County because you know we know this is going to be a big transition. Um, there are going to be bumps along the road. Uh, but I think that Wyndham County uh, is going to be uh, successful because we're going to have made the investments that we need to. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think one of the things uh, the governor has often reminded us is um, by the end of the day, we're going to be in the same place. Mm -hmm. Does he often remind you he's from Wyndham County? Well, he does. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I remind people that I've worked for two governors now. Mm -hmm. and. I would much, much rather work with this governor. <laughs> I think basically we're, we're, we're on the same page mm -hmm. when we get to the end of the day. And uh, it felt like in, in the past everything was a struggle yep. to, to try and find common ground. And, yeah. um, you know, we've done a lot. We've yeah. done a lot in the last four years. Uh, I, I think we can be proud of what we've done. And we're looking forward to where we get. It, it has been uh, a great uh, four years in some of the most challenging times yeah. that we've ever faced. You know, an incredible economic crisis, yeah. uh, tropical storm Irene, uh, you know, a variety of just hits to the gut. And quite frankly, I think that uh, Vermont is uh, hanging in there and getting better. You, you bet. I, I think our economy uh, has been doing much better than any other place, one of the lowest yeah. unemployment rates. Um, we've cr we fostered a climate where business, whether it's green jobs or otherwise, is ready to, to take that next mm -hmm. step. And... Uh, hard work of these collaborations yep. that you mentioned really position us well. Yeah. Well, and it's thanks to your good work as well um, and uh, your commitment to making sure that we remember that we represent all Vermonters, just uh, not, not those uh, of certain class. Well, uh, one of the things, the difficulties of human services, the biggest state agency, uh, but there are not many headlines that come out mm -hmm. of, of the good work we're doing. Right. And, uh, and it's important that we, we, we remember uh, all of Vermont, mm -hmm. you know, and it's those small towns that create the Vermont brand, mm -hmm. uh, and and all those, uh, all the Vermonters uh, that that make Vermont the great place it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Hey, it's my pleasure, Mike, and uh, it's good to have an opportunity to spend some time with you and with the people from Wyndham County. Great, and, and thanks again to the people of BCTV for making this possible, for for bringing our work uh, in the State House closer to you at home. Take care.